Right, so the communism tour has just started. Just had a general history of communism coming from how it was created by Karl Marx to how it was uh, installed into Russia and the Soviet Union through Lenin, through Stalin and then what happened with the fall of the Soviet Union. We're now heading to the first stop. Okay, so it turns out that Hungary wasn't part of the USSR officially, but they were a member of the Eastern Bloc. So they did have a puppet government installed by Moscow at the end of World War II. Hungary fought in both World War I and World War II, and they were on the losing side of both. One of the most haunting parts of uh, communism that ran from 1945 to 1989 was the installation of the secret police. That uh, knock in the middle of the night that you hear about uh, really did happen around here. And those police were completely unaccountable. No real justice system that was fair and transparent. This is Elizabeth Square been talking about uh, this place this was a car park in communism times and through this glass structure straight ahead you can see uh, it's now a, a bar frequented by stag and hen parties I think in the evenings there used to be a bus shelter a bus stop this was the main bus stop Uh, we've just been talking, as I say, about travelling during communism times and there used to be two passports in Hungary, a blue one and a red one. Red one for travelling within the Soviet Union and communist states like Vietnam and Cuba. And a blue one for travelling into capitalist countries. Blue one was a lot more expensive, a lot harder to get. There's a better view of that bus stop. <laughs> this is St. Stephen's Basilica and St. Stephen's Square. See if you can spot the communist made building. It is. So it's true that communism and religion didn't really mix that well. And that was the case here in Hungary. There was only two churches. Uh, the one that we just saw, St. Stephen's Basilica here on the Pesh side, and there was one on the Buddha side of the river, and that was it. So in the event of a nuclear war, this was actually the escape route, emergency escape route out of the underground Cold War nuclear bunkers. So we're near Parliament, one of the reasons that it's here. Also it was close to the transport hub, so the idea was that if there was a nuclear strike, the leaders would jump on the train to Moscow and congregate there. Probably though a plan that wouldn't work out too good because if there was a nuclear strike in uh, Budapest during the Cold War, it would have completely destroyed all the infrastructure in the center of the city. This is the only monument in Budapest dedicated to Russia, specifically to the Red Army who liberated Hungary at the end of World War II. And there, just to, to the right of it, is the American Embassy, as you can see with uh, pretty heavy security. Just one point of interest to note, actually. Uh, at the end of World War II, Berlin fell in two weeks to the Red Army. Here in Budapest, the city the fight between the Nazis and the Red Army took 100 days to come to an end. And that's why 
a lot of this city got destroyed. All the bridges at the end of World War II, the Elizabeth Bridge, the Chain Bridge, all destroyed. Buildings up there. If uh, there is a familiar face, uh, an American dream, I can say he dreamt it twice because he was an actor and also US president. This is known as the Liberty Bridge. It takes us from dictatorship, which was over there with a Soviet memorial around the way here to democracy and the parliament building pretty spectacular place one of the most infamous moments in communist ruled Hungary the 1956 Hungarian uprising it happened mostly and certainly first of all here in this square Hungarian protesters against communist rule gathered cutting the Soviet emblem out the middle of the Hungarian flag so they were protesting with Hungarian flags with a hole in the middle a symbol of the revolution exactly who it was but snipers on top of that building started shooting the protesters here in the square the uh, uprising lasted two weeks and was quashed in uh, pretty brutal style. This is the Parliament building, as I said before, inspired by the British Parliament building, apparently. Parliament Square. These two buildings behind it were also part of the Parliament complex. They're now, I believe, museums. the museum now and it's uh, pretty interesting it's taken you along on a timeline from the beginning of World War II to what I believe will be about 1989 the end of communism there's a tank in Parliament Square so as I was saying earlier during communist years the Hungarian flag had a Russian or Soviet emblem in the middle and during the um, uprising protesters cut it out which is why you sometimes see Hungarian flags with a hole in the middle. Right so I'm now just heading down what the locals call the Hungarian Chandelise down in that direction. So keeping with the communism theme from this morning's walking tour I'm a little bit further up the Hungarian Chandelise This is the House of Terror The headquarters of the Nazi secret police when they ruled here at the end of World War II It was taken over by the Soviets At the end of World War II and they set up their own secret police as well this is a segment of the Berlin Wall, donated by Germany. And as I said, between 1949 and 1989, the communists had their headquarters here of the secret police. So many injustices Again, no transparency. That knock in the middle of the night would be the worst thing that could possibly happen to you. You can see along the side of the building, I believe there are memorials to some of the victims. Murdered in many cases without trial, without being able to put their case forward. There we go, closer look at the plaques on the wall of the building. The place is now a museum called the House of Terror. 
So I'm going to go in and uh, learn a little bit about the things that happened here. experience uh, especially in the basement where I wasn't allowed to video unfortunately lots of cells set up for torture water cells oxygen cells uh, not very pleasant but yeah interesting 